Hey, good evening. Welcome to Better Wounds Live. Um, how many of you have thought, I have this wound, I'm just going to air it out and it's going to get better? It's too wet and gloopy if I leave the bandage on, so I should definitely let it air out. Those are one of the wound care basics I want to go over today. I'm in some Facebook groups and things like that, and I see lots of um, misconceptions out there, and Better Wounds is kind of my way of educating you at home that are dealing with wounds on your own, or if you're a caregiver, caring for those wounds. So I hope you find this page. I hope you find me. My name is Heather Flexer. I am a doctor of physical therapy and a certified wound specialist. Better Wounds is my creation and my way of sharing uh, wound care knowledge with all of you out there. So any like, comment, share, that's greatly appreciated. That just helps get the message out there even more. So definitely I'll take any questions. If you have any, I'll try to watch if any pop up or if I miss it, I will comment and reach out to you um, after the live. So mm -hmm. one of the wound care basics that we're going to talk about is um, drying the wound out. So to this day, I hear people all the time talking about letting a wound air out. And I don't know who's on, but if you can hear me mm -hmm. say hi. So, hey, Amber, thanks a lot. <laughs> so I hear all the time people want to air out their wounds. And actually, it's really important that we keep wounds moist and covered. So um, you're always trying to find like a balance, but you want to keep it at least a little moist. So sometimes just by keeping a dressing on it, that's enough. Um, moisture to keep it hydrated, that just helps. It actually, there was a study that was about 50% better healing rate if you keep it covered. So you're going to get ha faster healing times and actually the scar will heal, heal better and look better um, than if you were to air it out and let's say pick the scab off and then keep repeating that process. So um, that's even true for young like kids too. Their wounds will heal up faster if you just go ahead and keep it covered. Um, so just looking at my notes quick. Um, I'll usually hear people talk about keep airing it out more if, let's say, they're using a band-aid and, or bandage or whatever it is, and they look at it and it looks, it's just like goopy under there. So I usually will ask someone, you know, are you using some kind of ointment? Maybe we don't necessarily need that at that point, or you can try changing that cover dressing more often. That's something that you can do also. Like if you're just using one dressing and not changing it ever again, maybe you need to change it a little bit more often. That's something that can be done as well. Um, if you have that green tinge on the dressing, you can try using an antimicrobial cleanser, try using an antibiotic or an antimicrobial ointment, and that'll just help slough that off. You're always watching for signs and symptoms of infection. If we're just talking about a little drainage or a little goo, it's probably fine. But if you start having increases in pain, um, redness, swelling, all those things are signs of an impending infection. So you want to definitely be using those antimicrobial products. Keep an eye on those things and make appropriate changes as necessary. So if it's um, actively draining like heavily, then Probably a little bandage isn't going to be the best thing out there for you, just like a band-aid or something like that. You might need to use um, some more products. So, Amber says, small spot, hard, sore. I cover one over my prosthetic. Do I need to continue? Is it like a hard callousy type thing? Because sometimes the tissue will start to thicken. So. If we're talking about something that is dry, there's no drainage coming out, then that might be the more of the beginning of a callus type formation. I just want to plug my phone in. I just got a message. So if it's a callus type thing, that's probably okay to leave open. Nope. All right. 
Amber, I might need you to just shoot me a picture if you want to, and I'll respond to that after the live. Does that sound cool? I hope that's good. You can send me a picture and I'll let you know what I think. That'll be a lot easier. Um, Sore with no drainage is probably fine to leave open. You can use um, like a, a skin barrier ointment or cream or something like that. That might be good. But yeah, send me the picture. So if you have um, something that's actively draining, like heavily draining, you might need to add some more advanced products out there. And now kind of talking about tip number two. So tip number one was you're better off keeping it moist. It's going to heal faster. Tip number two is that if there is any hole in the skin, like if we've got any dead space, we need to fill that. So a lot of times I, I've seen some people commenting or posting things where they've had an incision and it opened up and their doc was just telling them to like cover it with a dressing. We actually need to fill that space in. So depending on what we put in there, it varies with different things, but we need to put something in that hole. Um, if we don't, we run the risk of um, abscess formation. So making sure that we um, fill the hole is really important. Um, if it's dry, we might use something like a hydrogel but it's surprising to me how common it is that wet to dry is still the one of the most popularized um, products. It's wetting a gauze dressing and putting it into a wound. And to be honest with you, that's really only an appropriate dressing if the wound is covered in sloughy tissue. So if you're looking at something that's all gooey, the whole thing is covered in goo then wet to dry would be appropriate. Otherwise, there's so many other things that are more appropriate. So if it's kind of dry, we're looking at more of like a hydrogel gauze. If it is infected, we might use something with silver or honey. Um, if it's super, super wet, then we might be looking at putting some calcium alginate product in there to help absorb that. So there's lots of variety. Again, that's something that um, it's easy for me to help if I see pictures or we do a consultation, then it's easy for me to help, but um, there's a lot of variability there. So I'm happy to answer questions. I can't tell you how many folks I see with treatment plans on Facebook and they just go months and months and months using the same thing, doing the same thing, not changing anything with like diet, exercise, therapy, uh, wound dressings, and there's so much that can be done. So, um, really I'm glad if you found this, that please share it out. Um, we want to make sure other people aren't suffering longer than they have to. Um, let's see. We, if you've been with an open wound for longer than a month, it kind of goes into the chronic stage or what we call a chronic wound. So we can kind of change whatever dressing, you know, that's fine. But if we're not addressing the cause of the wound in the first place, healing becomes quite difficult. So we always want to treat the ulcer. So if we're talking about an ischemic ulcer, obviously blood flow needs to be addressed. Um, if we're talking about a diabetic foot ulcer and blood sugars aren't under control, there's a lot that can be done that's not just the dressings, but you know, we're just kind of talking about wounds here. So let's see. So was there any, I don't know who else is on. I don't know if there's mm -hmm. any more questions. Sorry, my phone's going off crazy. My eye's been twitching for a couple of days, so I'm a little... <laughs> so, I really do appreciate everyone jumping on. Amber, I'm going to touch base with you on your dressings, but just to wrap it up, wound care basics. The two ones we talked about today were keeping the wound moist is going to help you heal faster, and if there is a crevice or a hole or tunneling, undermining, we need to be filling that with something. So, 
After this, I'll go ahead and post um, a link below if anyone wanted to reach out or wants me really to help them figure out what's going on with their wound. I do do consultations. It's a lot easier to um, figure out exactly what will work for you working one-on-one, -on -one, so you can feel free. I'll put a link below and we can connect that way, but I appreciate you jumping on live and letting me um, come into your world a little bit. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy it and found some of this information useful. Thank you so much. Join me again in two weeks. If there is something you're dying to know about, please feel free to reach out, post it on the page, send me a message, um, give me a suggestion for a topic. I always appreciate that. Thanks so much. Have a good night, guys. Bye.